Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at logic and the use of logic in apologetics. I'm going to just give you a, a, a basic statement of the way an atheist would use logic. And then we're just going to unpack it just for a second. So here's um, what an atheist would say. Proposition, God can do all things. Statement, can God make something so big that he cannot pick it up? If he can, then he cannot do all things because he could not pick up the rock. If he cannot, then he cannot do all things because he cannot make rock so big he can't pick it up. Conclusion, since God can do all things and we are shown that there are things he cannot do, therefore God does not exist. Now, uh, the atheists are very good at using these kind of logical conundrums and, and, and you kind of like look at them and think, oh dear, w what's going on here? But um, you just got to realize that, you know, there's logic and there's logic. You know, logic's only a tool, but it's a tool that can be used in a good way and it's a tool that can be used in a bad way. And often, uh, atheists and Christians can use logic in a bad way. So, let us just deconstruct. Proposition. Of the first proposition, God can do all things. Answer. Proposition. God cannot violate his own nature. That is, he cannot go against what he naturally is. When atheists use these logical arguments concerning God, all you often have to do is bring in another attribute of God that contradicts what they're saying. Uh, statement. Uh, statement. God can make something so... It, God can God make something so big that he cannot pick it up? If he can, then he cannot do all things, but he, because he could not pick up the rock. If he cannot, then he cannot do all things, because he cannot make a rock so big he cannot pick it up. Statement from the Christian perspective, God, God's nature does not permit him to lie. Uh, God's nature does not permit him to lie, to not be God, etc. So, in other words, he, God cannot deny who he is. And then conclusion, the conclusion from the atheist perspective, since God can do all things, and we have shown that there are things he cannot do, therefore God does not exist. Conclusion from a Christian perspective, therefore the statement that God can do all things is not true. And the conclusion raised against God is also not true. Um, so those are just some an example of the wrong use of logic, all right? Um, I just want to uh, give another example um, concerning logic here. It can be a valuable tool in witnessing it uh, f for God. For example, number one, the universe exists. Number two, the universe cannot be definitely old because if it were, it would have entered into a state of entropy long ago. A. Enthropy is a second law of thermodynamics which states that all things are moving towards chaos and non-usable energy. In other words, everything is running down. Number three, the universe is not in a state of non-usable energy, therefore it is not infinitely old. Also, if the universe were infinitely old, the universe would have run out of usable energy long ago. Number four, since the universe is not infinitely old, it had a beginning. Number five, the universe could not have brought itself into existence. Number six, something that before the universe and greater than the universe had to bring the universe into existence. That something is God. Now, uh, the writers here put all logical proofs for God have strengths and weaknesses, but the Christian should not be afraid to use logic, reason and evidence when defending the faith. Um, now, that was a helpful logical argument the problem with that logical argument is it did it needs to it made a jump from six to seven um, so you've got to make sure that when you make your um, um, premises that they're really strong and they hold but that they connect strongly to your conclusion um, you know all the premises are, are, are correct but the conclusion number seven uh, that something is God doesn't necessarily compute it, there has to be something a bit more needs to be put in another premise uh, in order to connect it to God because it says something before the universe 
and greater than the universe had to bring the universe into existence then it says that something is God but what kind of God it could have been a pantheistic God it could have been a Martian God it could have you know it doesn't necessarily imply a Christian God so in other words when you're using these arguments when you're using arguments make sure that your premises are rooted in good evidence and make sure that your conclusion moves off well from your premises all right so it would have been better if, if the person here would have put uh, another statement and um, the universe show signs of intelligence uh, and uh, a superior intelligence uh, because of the universe shows design okay sorry um, and then say um, the design could have only come uh, the intelligence could have only come from three sources aliens um, pantheist or a, a Christian God all right and then you'd have to give another premise or uh, some more evidence to to show why it's the Christian God rather than the pantheist or any other God all right so in other words when you're using these arguments make sure that you get your statements solidly right but also make sure you connect the conclusion to your statements um, and the writer here in this piece Matt Slick says this uh, is logic a common ground sorry I get it you know is logic a common ground between the believer and the unbeliever some state that there is no common ground between the believer and the unbeliever that the unbeliever's initial propositions against the Christian God do not allow him to accurately reason concerning God, the world, truth, or himself. Therefore, some Christian theologians conclude that there can be no ultimate common ground because the unsaved are unregenerate and their propositions are opposed to true rationality. Logic is true, not because it is logical, but because it's a reflection of God's nature, which is in order and truth. I believe that logic is indeed a type of common ground, but I do not believe that it possesses some innate quality that renders it above human capacity or limitations, nor does it possess any earthly or mystic qualities that somehow transcends the binding influence of sin. I think that logic used properly always vindicates the truths found in the Bible and points to God, whether or not uh, an unbeliever acknowledges it. Um, what do you think about those things? You know, some questions for you there. Um, I think that logic is helpful, it's valuable, uh, for especially clearing up misconceptions. Um, but in the end, logic can't save people. Only God can save people. You know, it says, you know, there's a passage in the Bible. Uh, let's have a look. There's a passage in the Bible. It's really important passage, really. It says, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet him is... Sorry. It says, But God has revealed them, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, But God has revealed them to us, through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, ye the deep things of God. So basically what I'm saying is logic is helpful. Uh, it can be misused by Christians and atheists. Uh, but it is helpful. But don't get too enamoured with logic, alright? Because in the end, you know, it's not about just beating people in argument. It's about showing grace and kindness to people and you can win an argument but lose the person because you've been cocky and you've not had the right attitude but logic's helpful but I won't worry about logic because logic can be manipulated and used by all sorts of people uh, and people will say things in debates and arguments or oh, this is a logical fallacy and all that but people can just use it use logic for their own purposes to manipulate things okay 
as long as you've got a basic understanding of logic that you need two premises or uh, you, not always two premises but generally two premises as a conclusion and that you base your premises on good evidence uh, and that it logically connects to your conclusion uh, it, it is basically uh, sort of a simple kind of logic uh, and you can gain skills there's a course at Oxford University which I did uh, which goes through all the ways you can spot false logical fall fallacies and how to present a good argument and how to go against uh, and, and, and to um, make your reasoning much more critical uh, and self-aware of logical fallacies. Uh, there's also a good course at Berkeley which shows you how you don't have to worry about logic uh, coming from a more of a postmodernist perspective. So I'll 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 leave uh, links to those courses at Oxford and at Berkeley, which I did and found them a real help. But but basically, just be aware that Christians and atheists can abuse logic, and just try to be honest and just try to keep your arguments simple but based in in good evidence and logically connect to your conclusion and realize that God does the work not you